Today we're looking at the impeachment of Andrew Johnson. Hello, welcome to the Daily Bell Ringer. Please don't forget to subscribe and take a look at the questions down in the description. The impeachment of President Andrew Johnson took place during a period in American history known as Reconstruction, as the nation was attempting to piece itself back together after the American Civil War. If you recall, impeachment is charging a sitting political official with misconduct or breaking the law, and eventually can lead to removal of an official. According to the U.S. Constitution, the power to impeach is held by Congress, and in order to fully impeach a president, the House of Representatives has to get a majority vote, or over 50 percent, to vote in favor of impeachment, and then in the Senate, there has to be a two-thirds majority vote in favor of impeachment. In American history, there has never been a president fully impeached. In order to see more about impeachment in American history, see my other video that's just strictly devoted to impeachment in American history. But back to Andrew Johnson. As the American Civil War got underway in April of 1861, Andrew Johnson was serving in the U.S. Senate representing the state of Tennessee. When Tennessee left the Union or seceded, Johnson was the only senator from a seceding state that remained with the Union or loyal to the Union, and by 1862, President Abraham Lincoln had made him the military governor of Tennessee. When Abraham Lincoln was elected president in 1860, he had Hannibal Hamlin as a fellow Republican as his vice president. But with the election of 1864 approaching, Lincoln wanted to have a vice president that might balance his ticket more and possibly get more Southern support. At the time, it was not uncommon for a president of one party to have a vice president from the opposite party to balance their ticket. So Lincoln, a Republican, chose Andrew Johnson, a Democrat, because he was a Democrat from Tennessee, to be his new vice president. And of course, in April of 1865, Lincoln was assassinated and Johnson, being the vice president, was sworn in as the 17th president of the United States. Virtually from day one in his presidency, Johnson was at odds with the Republicans who held control of Congress. Johnson was very in favor of a forgiving plan of Reconstruction, basically giving amnesty or forgiveness to any ex-Confederates, and he was also in favor of allowing Southern states to keep their laws in place that discriminated against African Americans. The radical Republicans that dominated Congress were not at all happy with Johnson's policies. In March of 1867, Congress passed the Tenure of Office Act, which said that the president could not remove appointed officials that had been confirmed by the U.S. Senate. It was basically meant to keep Johnson from removing members of his cabinet that were part of Lincoln's appointed cabinet. Johnson actually vetoed or refused to sign the act into law, but the Republicans had a big enough majority in Congress that they were able to override Johnson's veto and made it law. Well, Johnson particularly did not like his Secretary of War, Edwin Stanton, who had aided in leading the nation through the Civil War, but was also aligned with the radical Republicans. So after the act was passed, Johnson attempted to replace Stanton with Ulysses S. Grant, just to see if the Supreme Court might declare the act unconstitutional. But the Supreme Court refused to hear the case on the Tenure of Office Act, so Stanton remained in office. And by February 21st of 1868, Johnson decided to move ahead with removing Stanton anyway and replacing him with General Lorenzo Thomas. Edwin Stanton refused and actually barricaded himself in his office. The House of Representatives had already considered starting impeachment proceedings against Johnson. They jumped on the opportunity and led by radicals such as Thaddeus Stevens within three days had voted overwhelmingly 126 to 47 to impeach Johnson. So he had been impeached in the House, so now the impeachment moved on to the Senate, where they would have a trial to look at evidence and, the, and they would have to get a two-thirds majority to remove Johnson from office. The trial in the Senate began on March 4th of 1868, and President Johnson's defense team requested additional time to collect evidence, and so the trial was put off or put on hold until March 30th. The defense argued that Johnson had done nothing wrong because Lincoln had not officially reappointed Stanton before his death. The prosecution, of course, argued that Johnson blatantly defied Congress by dismissing Stanton and ignoring the Tenure of Office Act. At the time, there were 54 senators from 27 states in the Senate, and 
they needed 36 votes in order to get a two-thirds majority. The Senate voted on March 26th of 1868. The vote was 35 guilty to 19 not guilty. So Johnson was spared removal from office by one single vote. Johnson remained in office until March 4th of 1869 when Ulysses S. Grant took the oath of office as the 18th president of the United States. And not surprisingly, Andrew Johnson did not attend the inauguration of President Grant. So hopefully with that, you learned something. And thanks for watching.